Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Rocket Cairo podcast, the business and marketing podcast for people-centered chiropractors. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to talk about the ring dinger. We're going to talk about the uh, this kind of uh, astronomical YouTube phenomenon and just dissect it a little bit and say like, why why do so many chiropractors get annoyed or dislike this whole thing, this whole approach? Um, and also, what are the really good things that Dr. Johnson is doing that we could actually learn from and apply to our own chiropractic practice? Because I think if you're in a situation where you just kind of take uh, so many people with with a lot of things, they take the baby and throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I don't think that that's a smart way to do anything. Um, there's so many things that we can learn, even if you have a, uh, someone that you don't necessarily care for very much um, or someone that maybe even you're a little bit jealous or, or whatever, um, you can look at those things and say, well, you know, what can I learn from this? How can I improve or how can I step up my game from what I'm seeing here? So we're going to do that. Uh, before I get into that, I do want to remind you to check out Next Step. If you are listening to the podcast and you'd like to go a little bit deeper into some business and marketing trainings, you know, chiropractic college does not properly prepare you to be a business owner and to be a leader within your business and your community. And if you want to learn more about that, um, Next Step is a great place to do that. Uh, everything is just kind of a la carte so you can learn about the things that you want to that are most important to you. It's month to month. It's affordable. Um, it's for chiropractors. And so if you're in a situation where you're kind of feeling stuck, stuck and you want to to improve your mental chops, Next Step is a great place to do that. So you can learn about business and marketing online, offline, all kinds of different things. So go to Rocket Cairo, hit the join now button. I'd love to see you in the membership area. Also, if you want help with your website, SEO, uh, getting more reviews, that sort of thing, check out our prices and services page. And if you have any questions about that stuff, uh, then please feel free to reach out to me. I will be happy to answer those questions for you. All right, so here's a little bit of a disclaimer. My disclaimer is this. I don't know uh, Dr. Johnson. He's from Advanced Chiropractic Relief. I'm not sure if I said that already. And uh, I, you know, most of you guys would know him just as the ring dinger guy. And um, I don't know him. This is not meant to be a criticism of him. This is just meant to be an analysis. Um, I, as a general rule, don't watch a lot of chiropractic uh, adjustment videos or chiropractor videos, whether they're on Instagram or YouTube, just because I find most of them to be kind of cringy. Uh, I hardly watch my own. St I don't really even watch my own stuff because I think it's cringy also. So <laughs> it's, there's something about chiropractors, but especially when they're talking chiropractic or when they're adjusting patients and things like that, people share stuff with me all the time and I just watch it and think, oh my God, <laughs> And so I haven't actually watched a lot of his stuff until before I wanted to do this podcast. And I thought, well, is there something that we can learn here? Because um, because it's it always has been presented to me in a certain way um, and because of my natural tendency to not look at it and not really care to look at other chiropractor stuff, I kind of just made some assumptions and thought, well, let's just take a look at this and see if we can figure out, you know, why is it um, that chiropractors maybe have an angst against um you know, the ring dinger and that whole thing. And, and what are the good things? And so that's going to be the plan uh, for today, but this is not meant to be an insult or criticism of Dr. Johnson. I don't, I don't know him. So this is not an endorsement either. Cause like I said, I don't know. Him. I will tell you at the end, whether I get a ring dinger or not. So uh, let's do this. I, I think that this, I think that if we're going to be honest about why there are um, so many chiropractors across the internet that don't like this whole ring dinger thing, this guy has almost almost half a million subscribers on his YouTube channel. It, it is mind blowing, and compared to anything I've ever done on YouTube, it is just far exceeding that, and it far exceeds what most chiropractors could even imagine doing on YouTube. So it really is a phenomenon. And if we're going to be honest about what what is at the root of the disdain. I think that there's a foundation of jealousy that's actually there for most of the chiropractors that don't like him or don't like the ring dinger. Now, does that mean everything that I approve of everything that he does? No. Does that mean I would recommend everything that he does? No. That's I'm just making a general statement. And I think this is probably true if we were to look at any of the really highly successful, and there's not a ton of them, but there are some really successful chiropractors um, that are online and that, are, that have some good followings. And anytime I hear someone criticize these people, I do think that there's a foundation or kind of vein of jealousy that's, that is all the other complaints are kind of built on that. So if we're just gonna be honest, 
next time you want to complain about something he's doing or some other successful chiropractor, um, just be honest with yourself and say that part of it is because you're jealous. Like you wish that you had that kind of following. So that's, I think that's something that needs to be said. I also think that there are people that do really like him and do really like learn what he does. And I think he actually teaches the whole ring dinger thing uh, because I saw other websites that were advertising it and doing it. And there's like a trademark or whatever. Um, I think that he actually teaches it, which means to me that some people look at what he's doing and look at his success and they really admire that. So I do think that that could be a pro or a con, but I've yet to hear someone complain about him that I wasn't thinking to myself, eh, they're also a little jealous. Like that's, that's kind of there. So let's talk about some little things that, because I think that one of the things that, that Dr. Johnson has to his disadvantage in terms of other chiropractors liking him. Now, I don't think it really matters if other chiropractors like him, really. I mean, it, I don't know how much sleep he loses over it. If he loses any, I would be a little bit surprised. But I do think that what if he was trying to win a popularity contest with chiropractors, one of the things that is to his disadvantage is that he's kind of a perfect storm of little ticky-tack things that people pick at. And, and decide that they don't like someone when they don't know when they don't know somebody. So when you're standing on the outside looking at someone and you just decide, I don't like this person for this reason or that reason or whatever, a lot of times we pick at little things that aren't necessarily important if you actually were to get to know someone. So what are some of those things? Number one, he's not cool. Now, I say that as someone that's also not cool, so I'm not criticizing him. I'm just saying that he's not cool. Uh, he's got a Southern accent. He's got a little bit of a higher register voice. Um, you know, he wears the scrubs. He's, you know, kind of has this like uh, silly grandpa-y vibe about him. He's not cool. And if you compare him, and I saw him do a video with um, uh, Bo, I think it's Bo, Hightower, and, uh, you know, you look at someone like that and you're like, oh, well, he's, he's more cool. Like I don't relative to chiropractors, like <laughs> chiropractors aren't cool, but relative to chiropractors, like he's more cool. So I think that there are some people that would look at like Bo Hightower success and they'd be much more likely to be like, oh, I like this guy. I admire this guy just because, you know, this guy's cool. That guy's not. I also think that because I don't know Dr. Johnson, but I do know that he's a conservative and I do know that he's a Christian. And in our world, when they say you're not supposed to talk about religion and politics, the fact that I don't know him and I've studied him for a relatively short period of time, I know he's a Christian and I know he's a conservative. Those are also things on top of the jealousy that would make people annoyed or bothered by him. There are just some people that they find out that you voted for Trump and they're all of a sudden going to hate you. And, and that's just, it doesn't matter what else you do. That's just a bad thing. Likewise, being a Christian, like, oh, oh, you're a Christian. Well, you actually live out your faith. Well, then, you know, you're obviously a hate monger and you're this and you're that. And there are some people that all they're going to do is find out you're a Christian. They're going to find, you know, oh, he's not cool. And, you know, he's a Christian and he's, he's got this big following, Ugh, you know, and then that just, is enough. And then they share videos and make criticisms and it's not really based on much. Uh, so those are kind of the silly little things. Uh, what are some of the chiropractic things? Uh, I do think that chiropractors that are more evidence-based are not going to like him just simply because uh, he has more chiro speak and kind of falls more toward that traditional side of things in terms of chiropractic subluxation, like that idea. Anyone who's evidence-based is going to watch this stuff and just be like, oh, I just, I don't like it. Um, I also think that chiropractors that have a tendency to be more uh, methodical, clinical, more uh, analytical in what they're doing will look at the analysis and what I refer to as the dog and pony show um, and you know, the leg checks and like, oh, this is sore and that's sore and, and the whole like, you know, you can feel someone's neck and just be like, oh, this is tender here. And, and those things are uh, can be oftentimes very impressive to patients, like where they just go, wow, how did he know that? For those of us who have put our hands on a lot of people, we know that it's kind of a dog and pony show. And so I think that any of the chiropractors that are more evidence-based or more clinical that sees a chiropractor doing those things, type of things you see at screenings, the type of things that you see at, and I'm not saying there's no validity to those things, but it, it is viewed oftentimes as the dog and pony show. And I understand why people wouldn't like that or why that would be annoying to people that are more clinical. The three other things that I just wrote down is one, the generic approach. Um, 
and, and he would argue otherwise. His website says he has specific adjustments for specific people. I watched a lot of his different videos. To me, I, I mean, his adjustment, like he moves a lot of bones and it's, you know, the whole joke about the flying seven, um, you know, he makes the flying seven look like a specific Atlas adjustment. I mean, I've never seen anything like it as far as someone moving that. I mean, there's a joint, he's moving it. Um, and so that kind of generic uh, kind of gross manipulation approach is obviously going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. Also, the more technician based chiropractors, the more specific. Uh, he also has an aggressive approach. I mean, his adjustments are very, uh, very physical. That's that also rubs people the wrong way. I ran into that when I was in practice. I did a lot of knee chest adjustments, which are all a very aggressive, violent adjustment. It's there's no way to say it. It's a violent atlas adjustment. Um, when done right, it's very safe. Uh, when done right, it's very effective. Is it violent? Yes, it is very violent. And even the chiropractors that I would talk to that did more gentle adjusting, like they're just horrified at anyone that does a knee chest adjustment. I think that like the same thing because he has such an aggressive uh, adjustment style, that also could be something that rubs people the wrong way. The last thing I'll say this, and we'll kind of get into the pros, is that uh, I think that a lot of people just look at the whole package and the whole ring dinger thing and feel like it's kind of silly and feel like what he's doing is kind of cheapening chiropractic. And he talks about crack addicts and he talks about, you know, crack in the spine. And it seems to just be about the show more so than it is about anything that is, um, I don't even know what the right, right word is. It's, it's the things that are kind of deeper, more meaningful about chiropractic. And it just doesn't seem like that's what this is about any stretch of the imagination. It really just is about this whole show. And, and I think that there's a lot of people out there that feel like that type of approach to chiropractic is taking chiropractic where we would like it to be more professional and we'd like it to be looked at across the board as this um, higher thing or better thing or more important thing and dropping it down to just this charade or this carnival show. And, and so they feel like it's cheapening chiropractic. My guess is this, is that if you're someone who doesn't like the ringdinger, doesn't like the ringdinger approach, doesn't like him or whatever, and you're, you're kind of actively going around constantly criticizing and nitpicking, my guess is there's a foundation of jealousy and then you are piling on one, two, three, four of these other kind of little things and just going, just don't like this guy. Um, are any one of them kind of worth kind of harassing or hassling someone? Probably not, but... I do think that he's just that perfect storm of, you know, here are things that people don't like someone for. Uh, you have a bunch of them. People aren't going to like you. Now, I say people, I mean other chiropractors. People actually do like him. Now, so let's talk about the pros. Um, I think he has a very likable personality. He has kind of one of those uh, uh, happy, fun grandpa personalities. And I think that he probably gets along incredibly well with most of his patients. Like most of his patients probably love him. Um, he is very good at manipulating joints. Now, I we could argue whether it's specific or not, but if you're going to be a bone mover, you got to be a bone mover. If you're going to move all the joints, you got to be able to move all the joints. Someone who's been putting his hands on a lot of people for 40 plus years, um, he's obviously incredibly good at moving joints, which is a skill in and of itself. Um, if you wanted to take this approach to chiropractic and you weren't very good at moving joints, it's not going to go very well for you. So he's obviously very good at what he does from a manipulation standpoint. Uh, something else that he's really good at that some people may even kind of criticize when I say dog and pony show, but it's like getting positive feedback from the patient. This is something I noticed from the videos. And it's also something I've noticed from a lot of chiropractors that I've seen that have high volume practices. It's the getting uh, almost a suggestive talk, almost suggestive conversation. And and some people could would might even consider it manipulation, uh, like a, a manipulation of a person. I, I don't necessarily, uh, but I do see what's going on. Like when you're, you know, adjusting someone or working with someone and, oh, that feels better, doesn't it? Um, oh, that's sore, isn't it? Like, oh, that's looser now, isn't it? Like, oh, that's moving a little bit better. It's a very suggestive talk that is meant to get positive feedback. Um, whether you like it or not, it is effective from a patient management standpoint, and it is something I think he's very good at. And it's something that when you see a lot of high volume practices, 
that that is something you'll see a lot. And so it's something I just noticed with the different videos is there's a lot of sug positive suggestive talk that's going on where the person is almost being um very encouraged to say positive things. And I think that that's something that we could probably all do a little bit better. Um, not to the point of obviously manipulating someone or to the point of trying to get someone to say something that's not real. Uh, but I do think that it's something that he does very well. Um, also kind of along the same lines as getting a patient's affirmation. Um, so the idea of, um, when you make that suggestive statement, really waiting for and getting that person to affirm. And this is actually something that is, uh, that is something really good when you're doing care plans and recommendations with patients. You don't necessarily have to get someone to like sign a document. I think that's probably overkill when you're doing recommendations. But I did a podcast a couple of weeks ago where I was talking about closing the loop. And I do think that making sure that the person is in agreement with what's going on and what you're doing is something that is uh, really valuable, getting that affirmation from the person. Now, I did see a video, and it's one of his more popular videos where he's adjusting this woman, and it really, like, it it got to the point where you could just tell it was very overwhelming for her, and he just kind of kept going. I personally wouldn't do that just because uh, I, I just... I just, I, I personally wish wouldn't do that. I, I want the person to not be saying to themselves like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, like that was kind of what was going on in the video. Uh, and I think that that's at a point where you're just, he's, you know, you're just kind of pushing through instead of stopping and, and, you know, making sure the patient's okay. Now, obviously if he didn't think the patient was okay, he would have continued. Uh, but you know, that was something that, you know, when I say he's really good at getting that affirmation, there was a, I was watching videos where I'm like, oh, this is not an affirmation at all. <laughs> this is the person saying, I'm done. They're tapping out and he's like continuing to go. Um, I want to talk about the two things that I think are probably the things that he does best that um, contribute to his success. Number one is he gives people what they want. Um, now, I do not mean this in the sense that, uh Every person that walks in your door tells you what to do and you just do what they want. They want you to wash their car, you wash their car. Like, I'm not talking about that at all. I'm just saying that the vast majority of people don't give two craps about chiropractic. They just don't. They don't care about chiropractic. They don't care about the things that you care about. They don't care about the specificity of the adjustment. They don't care about your, your, uh, how amazing your treatment plan is and all this stuff. Like they don't, all the things that we kind of nerd out behind the scenes as chiropractors about, they don't care about any of that stuff. And more people care about, you know, like when you see a popular chiropractor on YouTube, it pretty much is about the crack. It's about the crack, it's about the experience, it's about the shenanigans and the dog and pony show. And so some of these things that that he's very good at, and some of it's personality, some of it's experience, like there's a lot of different things, factors that are going into this. And the same reason there's a lot of factors of why someone is, is maybe not liked by a certain percentage of people. But what he's doing is, is he's making the visit about something that the people are interested in or what the people want. And I don't think you have to make your practice around about the crack, but he is giving people what they want, focusing on things that they're interested in and, and putting much less emphasis. He's not trying to retrain them or reeducate them. Uh, he's keeping everything in the same vein, uh, which I think is an incredibly good patient education tool and tip. Um, you really should be making that person's chiropractic experience about them, about what they're concerned about, about what they want, about their goals. And so he is doing that. And, and mostly what he's doing is kind of centered around the crack and the ring dinger and that whole, that whole thing. But it is really about them and their experience and what they want and what they're there for, not about kind of retraining them into chiropractic soldiers and, and, and chiropractic belief systems and that whole thing. I guess the main point is this, like you don't, you don't really have to get people, people don't really have to understand what you're doing. Like they just don't like you, they just need to understand that you're helping them and that they're getting what they're, what they need. 
Uh, last thing I want to say is this, and I think this is probably the most important thing is this. He has done something that most chiropractors don't, and that is he's known for something. Now, you may not like the something that he's known for, but he is known for something to a level that most chiropractors will never achieve. But even within the context of your practice within your community, if you can become known for something, and because so many chiropractors make the mistake of trying to be everyone's chiropractor, and they try to be a fit for everything and try to fix everything and try to be every everything to everyone. That's a mistake. It's so much better from a business standpoint to hone in on one thing and, and really become known for it. Become And this is true for restaurants. It's true for any small business. When you become known for something within your local area, you can always expand upon that. And I'm not saying you only have to see a certain type of person or you only have to do a certain type of adjustment. Even with the whole ring dinger thing, the ring dinger is like this one kind of massive you know adjustment thing that or manipulation thing that he's doing. It's not only th it's not the only thing he's doing. And so it's just because he's known for something that doesn't mean he people walk in, they get the ring ding or they leave and he doesn't do anything else. He's doing other things as well. So having this thought process in your practice is what am I known for? Like, why are people going to, why do I stand out amongst the sea of gray in the chiropractic world? Because most chiropractors are in highly competitive markets. You're not the only chiropractor in your area. And so if you've never established in any sort of way, whether it's through expertise, through branding, through marketing, or through a combination of things, because it's probably all of those things, when you have established yourself as being an expert in something or, or about something and become known for something, that creates a, a, a a pathway for you to be successful in your practice and your community that is not there if you're just going to be a generalist. If you're going to be the jack of all trades and the master of none, you're going to have a really hard time. And I think the the one thing that he does exceptionally well and better than probably most chiropractors on the planet is he's known for something. Uh, last thing I would say is this. My only piece of advice, because I, like I said, I don't know him and uh, who am I to criticize someone's success? The only, my only piece of advice to him is I also looked at his online reviews. He's got like 200 and some online reviews. Um, when someone leaves a negative review, he has a tendency to just call them a troll <laughs> and assume they're not a real patient. Uh, I think that could be handled better. Uh, I'm a big fan of being very gracious and being very kind uh, when someone leaves a negative review because not for the person that's leaving the review. It's it's not really for the person that leaves a negative review. It's for all the people who will read the negative reviews because of those 200 and some reviews, the ones that people are going to scroll through and look at are going to be the negative ones. And they're also going to see how you respond. So I think they could probably be better and more gracious. And also, like I said, I, he has a very likable personality. And I think that if you have a very likable, kind of loving, kind of grandpa -y personality that people really like and they're drawn to, um, if they go online and see negative reviews and then they see that you have a snarky response to that, that snarky response, although it might be true and accurate and even fair, that snarky response really uh, rubs against the kind of friendly, likable grandpa -y personality. And so putting anything out there, and I'm sure he doesn't need new patients or anything like that. So I, I'm 100% I'm sure it doesn't matter. I'm just saying for your guys' purposes who are listening to this, if you have a, if you're putting yourself out as being kind and thoughtful and all this other stuff, as you should be, like you shouldn't be trying to be a jerk. Uh, you don't want to go online, someone leaves a negative review, and then you just slay them. Even if it's justified, you don't want to be slaying them. And then a person looks at that and goes, hmm, this person has a nasty streak. They might be right, but they still have a nasty streak. Not a good thing. So last thing is this, and I'll wrap this up. Would I get a ring dinger adjustment? My answer is no. Uh, I, the part of me that really appreciates specificity, um, the thing that has worked best for me over the years is I usually get upper cervical adjustments. Um, I usually get one adjustment uh, to the left side of my upper cervical spine. That's pretty much it. I do uh, stretching and trigger point stuff and do all kinds of things to do other stuff, but almost always, like 99.9% .9 of the time, I get adjustments to my spine. It is to the left side of my upper cervical spine. So the idea of someone grabbing my head and yanking on it or moving all these bones in my shoulders and arms and everything else and hips and whatever, um, that seems like a horrible nightmare to me. And I imagine my body would respond very poorly to it. And because of my specificity kind of you know, thing, like I just, it's, it's, I want to go to someone who's going to do less, not more. And, um, 
you know, it's, it's not something that I would ever refer someone to as well. Does it mean it's bad? No, not necessarily. Does it mean it's hurting people or it's dangerous? No, not necessarily. Like, I don't know enough about it to make those accusations. I'm just answering the question, what I personally get a ring dinger adjustment if someone was offering, you know, if he was at a seminar or was willing to fly to my house and give me an adjustment, I would be like, um, thanks, but no thanks. If you want to go to lunch and talk, that'd be cool. Like, that'd be fine. I'd, that'd be fine, but I do not want that done to me. Um, no, thank you. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. A little bit of a weird episode, but I thought it would be interesting to look at some a real world example of uh, some things that people doing well, people doing maybe not so well, um, and just take an honest look at what we like and don't like and um, take a look in our own mirror. So I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you guys for listening. I'll talk to you on the next episode. See you.